Here's a little industry not so secret. This backdrop that you've been seeing me in front of is not completely painted. So there's still part of my wall that's this ugly piss yellow. So a uh, call up drama alert. You got some tea on your hands, guys. So I got some high quality iPad content coming up soon. You know, some in-depth coverage and comparisons between the Mini 5, the iPad Air 3, the iPad Pro, of course, and the iPad um, 10.2. Yeah, that's what it is. I have all these iPads in my possession. I'm like forgetting which ones I have. And don't worry, not keeping them all. You know, I buy and return as small YouTubers do. But that's not the point of this video. Today, I don't have all the time in the world. I did want to do some kind of coverage. And I did a poll on my community tab. And it seemed like you guys wanted to see some coverage of macOS Catalina's sidecar feature demoed on some of my iPads here. So, and that is exactly what we're going to do here. I have my Mini 5, I have my iPad Pro 11, my personal, you know, iPad here. I have my MacBook Pro 16 inch. No, not my 16 inch. It's not even out yet. I have my MacBook Pro 13 inch and we're going to just demo, you know, using your iPad as an external display here. Of course, on both of these sizes going over, you know, just different features you can, you know, take advantage of how you might use this and how I might use this in my own workflow. But before we continue here, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, as the algorithm likes that, and will help push my content to more people. So using the sidecar feature is pretty simple. All you have to do is be connected to the same network as your Mac and have your iPad trusted to your Mac, also have Bluetooth enabled, and then on your Mac, all you have to do is go to the top bar here and select the button where the AirPlay button would be and then select the iPad that you want. So in this case, the iPad that I want is my iPad Pro, which is iPad 3 and it immediately begins to pair. So in this case, I'm using my um, display here. It's being mirrored. Um, right here is the ability to hide or show your dock, but that is more useful when you are you know, using this as an extended display, which I would recommend doing, honestly, because you're gonna wanna have some things on your Mac screen to control um, that aren't gonna work quite as well here with your iPad. So what would you do um, with this sidecar feature? Well, for one, it's really great if you're doing anything drawing oriented, particularly with Photoshop here. Um, I create thumbnails in Photoshop so if I wanted to you know edit something a little bit easier maybe I would use that here and it's actually already open so I can open up a recent file here so let's go to this pixel versus iPhone PSD it actually scaled pretty nicely in this instance but of course if it isn't you can press the plus button and it will fix things here what's great about sidecar is that you can you know use your Apple pencil um like what's great about sidecar is that you can oh so immediately as I'm trying to do this demo, it's already freezing up. This is a reality of Sidecar. Um, it's not perfect. And that is one of the points that I was going to touch on. I just didn't expect it to be this early in the video here. It's not always successful, but when it is, it works pretty well. So my Mac is restarting. Um, because somehow that failed. So we're, we're gonna keep this in the video. This is, you know, honest video journalism here. This feature is not perfect, and that was a perfect example of that. Yeah, this is still somewhat of a half-baked feature. They still have a lot more refining to do because I have found myself running into several free subs like I just encountered. Okay, so let's hope that it works this time. You can, like, zoom in like you would on a trackpad here. You can interact with your layers, which is really nice here. But one thing that's you know, makes this a different experience from just using it on your Mac books trackpad is the ability to draw sort of with particular tools like for example i use the um, little selection tool or the polygonal lasso tool all the time so i will bring for example one of the original images all the way to the top here just to show you what i normally do so here we go if i enable this this is a raw image that i import right into photoshop here this is how i get those floating shots i kind of hold the phone in a particular way to make it look like it's just floating my fingers are not really in there i can just cut them out really easily so with the mouse it's kind of difficult to you know get this or do this really quickly but with the pencil here um it's a lot easier i found to cut things out so you can just kind of like this is not going to be perfect because i'm kind of rushing this here you can just kind of go about cutting things out even you know quicker obviously this is not a perfect job at all and if you took your time you'd actually you know get a really nice result but this is way way faster than it would be with a trackpad which is quite nice so i can you know do edit copy and then edit paste and then I have this new layer here which I can then manipulate you know move around with my pencil and then of course I can you know manipulate the entire image here by rotating like you could on a track but it's a little squirrely to be honest like it's not quite refined so where you can like really scroll with ease I do obviously like it's just doing weird stuff um so this is still sort of a half-baked sort of feature although it does work um 
But yeah, you can, you know, navigate like you would with the trackpad here. I can hide this layer. So that is one thing I found really useful. You know, something that I could apply in my workflow is with Photoshop, cutting images out, for example. And of course, you can imagine people who draw for a living would really love being able to, you know, use the Apple Pencil and its pressure sensitivity to draw, you know, in Photoshop files and Illustrator files, etc. So we're gonna not save that. Of course, you can interact with your desktop and just, you know, websites with a desktop or the real desktop Safari, although it's still desktop Safari on the iPad Pro. Let's load up, I don't know, my Social Blade page here because I totally don't check this six times a day. Um, so we can scroll here like you would with a trackpad and it's actually quite responsive. There's really no delay looking at my MacBook Pro versus my iPad Pro here. It's really quick, even though this is done completely wirelessly, which is pretty impressive, albeit it's not perfect as we saw. It does disconnect sometimes. Um, we can close this up here. Of course, you can access the full version of Finder here. So if I wanted to like preview an image, I could bring up the keyboard, pressing the keyboard button here. By the way, these are little function buttons, command, option, you know, control, shift all those you can bring up the keyboard so I could just press the spacebar like you could to preview stuff browse finder a little bit more two finger drag here drag around the window make it full screen if we wanted to you know so on and so forth I really would love to see a Mac OS experience on iPad Pro that would be so cool it's definitely powerful enough to run it which is funny but Apple won't do that at least in the near future um of course you can you know open you know Spotify let's just say you wanted to control Spotify on your Mac I don't know why you would want to do this but you can of course you can you know navigate through songs and whatever you want to do um of course you can interact and here we are it's frozen up this happens all the time um, this is not just a rare occurrence, this happens way too much, which is what makes this feature not really reliable at the current moment. I think it's going to get better. See, look at this, lost connection, disconnect, okay. So here we are, we're rebooting again. This is actually kind of disappointing. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to switch up things here. I'm going to put my iPad Pro to the side here, and we're going to use my iPad Mini just to give you an idea about how this would work on a smaller iPad. So we'll do that and see if it actually makes a difference in terms of, you know, the compatibility or the issues that we're having with Sidecar here. So I will. And here we go. It is connected to my iPad mini. Now, so this is in the extended display mode. I can hide and show the dock if I want. So this is basically keeping the regular display the way it is. So I could like drag windows over, which would appear on the other screen here. So as you can see here, it popped up over here. You can bring it over here and then bring it back over there as you would with like a multiple monitor setup. So basically it's treating this as an external wireless monitor, which is pretty cool. And then of course you get the controls here, just like you do with the iPad Pro mirroring the display. So what else might you wanna do? Well, you can actually do some video editing if you wanted to with Final Cut Pro. It's not a perfect experience and it's probably going to crash again, but we'll see how this loads up here. Um, I actually really enjoy this feature. I wish that it would work better because I would edit sometimes like this, you know, obviously not on the go, but if I wasn't feeling it, you know, I just wanted to edit on the couch, you could absolutely do that here. So we can scroll through the timeline um, without too much lag, which is pretty cool, albeit, you know, it might crash on us anytime here. Um, so let's go all the way to the beginning, you know, zoom all the way out. It's really cool to be able to operate a full Final Cut Pro window on my iPad with little to zero, with little to no latency. That's the great part about Sidecar. It doesn't have a lot of latency, but again, as we saw, it's not totally reliable, at least in its earlier stages. And of course, you get touchpad controls, which is pretty cool here. Um, so we can actually go into full screen to show like this little like timeline view that you would get on like a MacBook Pro with its touch bar. So that's dope. And it actually plays back the video without really any lag which is really cool and of course i'm sure it's you know a little bit delayed from what you would see it on the macbook but playback does not really lag which again is really impressive so of course if i wanted to edit a clip here i could go to the effects maybe and i can't really access i don't know like the the little button to you know edit like the color so i'm gonna have to press my actual keyboard i'm gonna go into command six mode and it doesn't seem like it's perfectly scaled here to fit in the full screen window, which kind of sucks, which goes to show once again, this is sort of a half fake feature. So I'm gonna press the escape button on my MacBook to get out of the full screen mode here. And um, it cannot scale small enough to fit this screen, which is a little unfortunate, but whatever. So say I wanted to, I don't know, color this, you know, uh, clip here, you know, adjust the saturation, adjust exposure here, as you can see, oh, and we're frozen again. So here we once again have an extended display here. I'm gonna mirror it for our final thoughts just to kind of talk about my overall impression of this experience. And I just thought about the title and I think it might be, you know, Project Sidecar controlling your Mac with your iPad 
amazingly half-baked. And I mean that because it's an amazing feature. I love the fact we can make use of the Apple Pencil here, a very fine point of input, to interact with, you know, full desktop Mac apps. This is great for professionals, you know, who do a lot of creative work, like I showed you with Photoshop. That is something that I plan on using in the future for sure, especially when Apple finally gets its act together and makes this a more refined experience. Right now, as you saw, it crashed several times during this demo here, and things don't scale quite right, especially on this smaller iPad mini display, which is a problem. So Apple, if you are watching me here, I absolutely love this concept. I really do like how it's a wireless feature, which, which makes this all the more seamless. However, um, you got to fix the disconnection issues and you got to fix the scaling issues. Otherwise, this is not going to be, you know, practical to use in my everyday workflow. So I hope this video was informative. It definitely was for me. I did not know Sidecar was this buggy at the moment. It is definitely an amazing concept and it seems to work to an extent other than the fact that it's constantly crashing. It is not practical at the current moment because of that. So once again, once that is fixed, I will definitely use this in my everyday work, particularly with the desktop Photoshop app, of course, until it comes to iPad Pro natively. I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.